Hello. I mentioned in the first part of the lecture <clears throat> that I had started a software company back in 2014. I'll give you a little bit of background. I met a woman who uh, wanted to start her own HIM company, Health Information Management, uh, specifically around coding and reimbursement. And uh, when I met her, she was one person and she had about $200,000 of annual revenue her first year. So with working with her, uh, we were able to put together some goals and some strategies to achieve those goals. She hired me to help her achieve those strategies. And by the end of the second year, uh, she was over $4 million in revenue and had 20 uh, staff members and had uh, many contracts specifically on the West Coast. At that time, it was during the ICD-10 uh, transition. And she had quite a lot of subject matter uh, expertise in ICD-9, ICD-10 coding, and of course I had uh, experience starting companies. Uh, another person that we worked with was a consultant, and he was supposed to be uh, the sales arm of this, so we started a company called Yumi Software. Now, Yumi Software, let me pull this over here so you can see, Yumi Software was uh, the three of us, and we had a number of things. I, I created the logo and the website, and I pardon because this is uh, back in 2013, and it has not been updated since, and I'll go into more, more about that later. But if you look at one of the services that we offered, uh, one of the services that we offered was uh, was called FITS. And let me see to where solutions, there it is. And FITS was a, um, a PHI uh, incident tracking Let's see, incident tracking uh, software package. So what we were going to do was have this this company that had this solution, uh, uh, PHI incident tracking for data breaches. Uh, we were also going to offer a virtual privacy officer and virtual security officer specifically geared to smaller organizations who maybe couldn't have uh, the resources to have somebody on staff full time to fill both of those roles or either of those roles. And we also offered something that was called, uh, it was a software, it was a, actually a, a game, uh, if you will, that was offered on the Android store as well as on the uh, iTunes store. So really what I'd like to discuss is kind of the development of that game. So as I mentioned before, the, uh, the actual ICD-10 implementation was right around the corner. And one of the things that, that we had to do uh, and when I say we, I mean healthcare in general, was to educate uh, RHIAs and RHITs on the new ICD-10 uh, codes and some of the regulations and rules. So we thought it would be a good idea to put together a game where we would have different levels that people will go through and they would test their knowledge about the upcoming transition. Uh, the business model behind this, because we were going to give this game away for free to all these different coders uh, all across the country, was that we were going to sell to vendors who were going to offer services. So there would be a splash screen in between popping up with that, that service. So we would charge the vendors X number of dollars to have their splash screen. Uh, go, and that would be the business model. So the money that we receive from the vendors uh, to, to have their splash screen on this would go to further develop the game or to add additional levels or ultimately as a business into our pockets as profit. So, because I had software development experience, um, part of my uh, charge was to go out there and find somebody to actually code this. And this is where a master service agreement comes in. Now, the software development is going to be very similar to all the different uh, all the different things that are out there, all the different uh, any any kind of development or vendor that you work with is going to have some sort of a uh, master service agreement. So this is a master service agreement. This is very typical of what an MSA would look like. We talk about intellectual property rights, uh, services. Uh, the company was actually called Z Games. And the scope of the services. And this was kind of the overarching uh, agreement that we had. And of course, down here at the bottom, very bottom, is a signature of me as a chief technology officer back in 2013. And then, of course, the company's uh, president and CEO, the developer of the software. So that would be a typical MSA. Also, there would be a statement of work. Now, the statement of work more specifically defines exactly what this is. 
So this would be UE Software's ICD-10 application, Phase 1 and Phase 2, the deliverables, uh, 8 screens, 4 builds, iOS, Android platform, independent source code, uh, the client obligations that we had, uh, we had to come up with an Amazon's developer portal, as well as a Google Play Market, and we also had to get into um, into the uh, into iTunes. Uh, and Apple was very strict about that. So the first payment was forty two twenty five. The second was forty two twenty five for this particular statement of work. And of course, if you go all the way down here to the bottom, you see the um, signatures as well as the um, uh, kind of the history of how this was how this went through the second statement of work uh, was for more information and it was really about the questions answer the questions of game functionality and provide access to storage location on the internet and then a final payment and this was a little bit more than just the nine hundred dollars but uh, as you can see you know we signed it and and went on from there now by the time we went to the to the second stage of this process the person who was supposed to be selling the software kind of dropped off. Now, he was still part owner, but he didn't really have a functional role because he wasn't doing what he was supposed to. So I kind of assumed that title of president and CTO while I was also running my company at Executive Consulting. So we got this game together. And one of the deliverables, of course, is the um, copy of the ICD-10 um, questions. So it's the questions and the answer, and I'll go ahead and open that up. It's in a spreadsheet, and it's very typical to be in a spreadsheet because what we're doing is we're doing a data upload. So when we get this over here, let me see, I'll get this over here for you. Yeah. So when we get this together, we have um, our pack 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, the answers, uh, the kind of the remediation. So if you answer it wrong, what would the right answer be so that we'd be more successful the next time? And so we had these questions. And then we also had to put together the assets. And the assets are really kind of the um, the artwork that goes around it, the fonts, the settings. So this was some of the artwork that we had that would go into this game. Now, again, this is very typical development for a software package, whether it's um, an electronic medical record that you might be working with with Cerner, or a game that you would play uh, on your phone. And going through, picking out the artwork, and then putting it together. So once we put it all together, it sort of looked like this. Now, this is not something that uh, you can download anymore because it's been you know five years and the company is now defunct. But, um, but this is sort of what it would look like. And this is the PowerPoint, the, actually the sales deck of how we would sell this uh, to people who wanted to, um, who potentially wanted to invest in putting this together. So of course there's Yumi software and the software was called, the, the game was called, Are You Prepared? And it was the ICD-10 edition. Then this was the splash screen requirements for an iPhone and then also for an Android. Now keep in mind, this is an, uh, iPhone 4, I think it was. So it's been what, five years ago. So it was a number of iterations before. So the PNG file of what their splash screen was, what their banner of, of whatever the healthcare facility or the, the, the um, healthcare consulting, uh, IT consulting, HIM consulting company would be, would have to fit these parameters. And then, of course, we would sell it. Uh, this was an example uh, using Primo Consulting Group, who was the uh, other co-owner, the, the lady who ran that with me. And, um, and I developed her, um, her logo and some of the, the toolkits we had as a strategy to put together. But this was kind of the splash screen, and then it could link to um, to the, the client's website. So we would sell this, but give the game away for free. Then we would add the title in association with Primo Consulting Group presents, Are You Prepared? So that's kind of the opening of it. When you click on new game, it goes to level one, getting to know ICD-10, and then your first question around ICD-10. You would have a countdown timer, and then you could also click on the question mark to get a little bit more information to help you out with that, along with the four answers and the answers had remediation. So once you leveled up, you went to the next level. The, again, the whole point of this was to, uh, to raise awareness about ICD-10, but also to wear, raise awareness with uh, coders that there were, there, were, uh, there were resources out there for them to use to help them in their hospitals with this transition. One of the major problems that we had 
was that you know the usability function just well and you know we tried to do the usability testing and that's with every software package is the fact that our target audience really was not a decision maker they were influencers but they were not decision makers and what we were asking to do was to uh, to for a pretty penny have a splash screen that would reach only influencers and most companies didn't like that very much um, the second problem we had was because we couldn't get revenue because the person who was supposed to sell didn't do that portion, I couldn't do it, is that we had this game that we were handing out for free and there was no way, no money to uh, update the game. At that point in time, I had one of two choices. I could either maintain my own company that I owned 100% or I could push that to the wayside and concentrate on Yumi software of which I owned a third. Obviously, you know which way I went. And, um, and no hard feelings, you know, just uh, the, the person that we wanted to have uh, be the, the, the salesperson just wasn't him. And uh, the person who was a subject matter expert wasn't a software developer. And she really did sales, but she had a $4 million company. So it was kind of an easy decision to, to kind of give this up. Ironically, about six months later, he came to both of us and bought our shares of the company out. So he actually purchased the company from us and he owned it 100%. And if you look on the website of yumisoftware.com, it has not been updated since 2013. So I have no idea what he's done with it since, but that was kind of my foray into uh, software development uh, for games, uh, along with the uh, iPhone and the, um, and the Android device. And it was very interesting. We got to the end. Great job. New high score. Um, I'm really proud of this because it was a really cool experience to, to have done this. But at the same time, it, it wasn't very successful for a number of reasons. And, um, you know, I just, uh, there's the Android manifest. And uh, there's also um, something I think in here for, for Apple. But I just wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, it was very interesting because we were talking about revenue cycle and ICD-9 and ICD-10. And, uh, and, you know, even today, they're still rolling out some rules and regulations around ICD-10. So I think the last one just went in force like October 1st or something like that. Real quick, um, as I see my cat is cleaning himself behind me. Uh, one of the other things that we were doing is, uh, you remember looking at the, the shell of the program I showed you the upload of the uh, spreadsheet with the different things was that it was uh, are you prepared IC 10 edition was the plan was to come out with other editions and we could have done everything from medical terminology to really anything that uh, that had some sort of a question and multiple answer format so the shell that we put together of are you prepared ICD 10 edition was really uh, meant to be uh, repurposed later on for multiple games so that we would have multiple opportunities to utilize the development of this software one time. And again, the software development model is you develop it once and you sell it many times. So that really defrays the development cost. Uh, so if you look at, um, you know, some of the other vendors that are out there or even a game, you know, you have the game development or you have the software development and then you push it out and sell it to as many people as you can or as many organizations as you can and that way it defrays the cost of the actual development. Uh, the return on investment on a, a piece of software can be as high as like 95%. So you spend five grand on it and it reaps a hundred grand worth of uh, revenue so that your net profit would be uh, co cost after goods sold um, would be like $95,000 uh, of that $100,000. So that was kind of the purpose behind that. And uh, I just wanted to edit this video and kind of jump in real quick to, to mention that because th that was just something that just occurred to me um, uh, as I was watching it uh, again and uh, making sure that my cats weren't too apparent in them, but um, evidently they are. So that's Bucky, and the other one that may have walked by that was uh, black and white is, uh, is Polly. So uh, those are the two cats that I have, and my children, you may have heard giggling uh, throughout the uh, modules and the lectures. But anyway, I just wanted to share that with you one last time. And I'll continue with the what I was about to say. So um, again, you're not responsible for any of this knowledge. This was just a, you know, I did this in my life, and it's kind of cool, and I can relate that experience to you and share that with you. And I had an opportunity to do that, so, so I did so. Uh, again... Keep working on your um, on your papers, 
and thank you very much again for listening.